Welcome to our podcast, Change from the Inside Out, where we discuss personal, academic, career, entrepreneur, and business growth with guests who are an expert in their field. In today's episode, we focus on business growth, and we look at how any business can communicate more effectively with its audience. It's become more important than ever to communicate better in today's world. How businesses communicate with their employees, customers, suppliers, and community can mean the difference between thriving, surviving, or closing up shop for good. When a business really understands and connects with its audience, it reaps so many benefits and builds a strong, unique brand that has an engaged relationship with all its stakeholders. This topic warrants the input of an industry expert, and today we're privileged to have Lindsay Wagner join us as our guest. If you know Lindsay, you'll know just how passionate she is about her career. She's attained numerous qualifications in her profession, including a diploma in copywriting, a diploma in magazine journalism, and a Bachelor of Arts degree in communication science. She's been in the business communication industry since 2003, when she began her career in advertising. Since then, she's had a hand in growing some of the biggest brands as a copywriter, editorial assistant, journalist, features writer, communications coordinator, and a social media and content writer. When she's not improving businesses through her expertise, you'll find Lindsay playing the violin or spending time with her cute staffy dog named Shadow. Right now, she's also learning to play the ukulele, which is a small guitar-like instrument. Welcome to the show, Lindsay. Oh, thank you so much. It's a beautiful intro. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. (laughs) So, Lindsay, having detailed a little bit about your career path, it's really a very interesting one. You've studied journalism, copywriting, and communication science, and you've used this knowledge in a number of different organizations. What inspired you to follow this career path? So my journey with writing itself and reading started when I was very young. My mom and I, we traveled by train, and my mom, who's a preschool teacher, taught me how to read and write when I was about four years old. So we'd read on the train every evening. So my love for books and reading and storytelling started at a very, very young age. It's part of my DNA. I love connecting and telling stories. I even write short stories as it is. I was inspired. I guess it's just because I love the written word, but I also love people. So that's where it all started for me. And then from there, you took that passion that you had from a very young age, Lindsay, and you then pursued uh, studies in that field. How did that come about where you actually ended up in that study arena? When I was about 18, 19, that's when I matriculated, around 2000, 2001, quite a while back. (laughs) I took a gap year and I did some work shadowing at um, Cosmo magazine, Associate Magazines. My dad got me into that. He um, asked one of the editors to give me a chance to just spend some time then to see if I really wanted to become a writer. I remember the writers told me, do not even try going into writing. You're going to be sitting here <laughs> and trying to warn me against it. But nothing could stop me. I spent the whole, I think I spent two days working there. So that's where I started out with work shadowing. Mm. My dad, who got somebody at Ogilvy who was working there, who was my teacher at Study Methods, and they got me the, the lessons, the actual um, tests to write the tests at Ogilvy. So in one week, I sat up at my table at home and I wrote, I sat up the whole night because I wanted it so badly. You know, funds wasn't an option really for me. So I ended up becoming a scholarship student. And my dad said, look, I don't have the funds to take see my daughter to the school. But, you know, she's passionate. And I ended up at one of the most amazing schools. At that time, Lady Miller was very selective. And um, I made it as a young woman from Mitchell's gang. I had these big dreams. And I was not going to let anyone stop me. And my parents were always there rooting for me. And um, I remember going into my first day, it was very overwhelming, I was 18 years old, and um, I always fought hard. It was a tough school, but I fought hard and I learned the basics of advertising from Ellen and Brian, my mentors, and I will never forget them. Everything that I learned from them has carried me through throughout my entire career. That's an amazing journey, Lindsay, and having gotten the exposure and experience that you got from that. You then taken it and worked in different companies and you've done copywriting and communication work for some of the biggest brands. How did your work benefit these brands and what was the biggest impact? Hey, so for me, I will never forget my time at Mixit. It was really amazing because at the time when I started, there was this big takeover with Alan Craig. 
So my manager at the time was um, retrenched. And because myself and two marketers ended up being in this marketing department. And we're given a brief to market the seven wonders of the world. We needed to get people to vote for Table Mountain to become one of the seven wonders of the world using the Mixit platform. But at that time, I remember I was working on the social media, the Facebook page, and I'd really worked hard at building connections, you know, mm. getting the people or mix of people to actually feel the connection between you know, themselves and the brand, to feel like they're on the same platform, the same common ground, you know. And I actually built that up with the tone of voice, the way I spoke to them. I wasn't highfalutin in the way that I spoke to them. I spoke about things that, that mattered to them. Mm. And when we needed to market Seven Wonders of the World, it worked wonders because we used our social media platforms to market that. And I remember driving home from work one day and on the radio, they announced that Table Mountain is now one of the seven wonders of the world. I will never forget that day. I think that's probably the highlight of my career. It was hard work and I feel like it was a win for people who use Mixit. Hey, we made that happen and that's what you want for a brand. You want people to feel a part of something great. That's an amazing success story and such a highly successful campaign that you ran there, Lindsay. There's obviously the flip side of not having a campaign as successful as you want it to be. What would you do if a campaign didn't perform as well? Uh, I think if something doesn't work out just in life in general, you get up and you do it again and you find a better way. And Because there are many solutions. There's not just one, right? From the basis, I always go back to understanding the customer and getting going into the trenches, be an anthropologist. Get to know your customer. Don't sit from the you know, high platform and look down. I think most times when something isn't successful is when you don't understand the customer. So what I generally do is I go back to the drawing board. I see which platforms work. If I were to speak to art lovers, would I go to um, a night club? Is that where I'll find all the art clubs? So for me, I go back to understanding the customer and understanding and going through the loop and seeing where things went wrong. But it's usually at the bottom, the strategy. Like I say, the basics come into play with everything throughout my whole career. When you write, when you have to do an ad, you always start with your creative strategy. Know your customer base, but also know your competitors. Really get into the nitty gritty of that. And I think I'd go back to that to begin with. And it's good that you brought that up, Lindsay, the foundations of putting a campaign together or of communicating to your audience. So in today's world, it's become more important than ever to communicate effectively. What would you say are the most important things that businesses need to know about communicating with their audience? I think, like I say, the most important is definitely get to understand your customer, know the psychographics. Where are they in the headspace? What are they thinking? What sort of matters to them? What do they enjoy? Um, how does your brand align to what they're looking for? There's a word called magic that I love. I don't hear it so often enough. Like, find the magic in your brand. What that connects your customer to your brand? Not just, we have a brilliant product, it's amazing, you can't say no, but why should I even take a look at what you have to offer? You know, it's like selling a cup. What's the magic in your cup? I think the most important part is to find a connection, to have the right tone and manner and how you present your ideas, understand where your customers are coming from and how you can and, and provide that need for them, if it's an emotional need or anything else. Get to understand what moves people because emotion is a universal language and I think that's where we need to get to. And so in honing our communications to our audience, there's a skill and an art to it, right, Lindsay? I mean, that's why you're in the profession that you are. Um, So how do you actually tailor a message to your target audience as a business? I'm an advocate for briefs. (laughs) As a writer, I need to know what you want from me. So everything matters, all the components, who am I speaking to, why am I saying, what do I want to say to them, that's important for any writer. And all the information you can possibly give me will help me write the best copy I can for you. So I think when you get to brief and strategy, that's, like I said, it's very important for the writer, the creative to create something. When I write something, I think about the person, I put myself in that person's shoes, I see things from their point of view. Yeah, like I say, it's very much about the customer. I don't write something first time. It's not going to be right the first time. Tailor it as much as I can, rewrite it, send it to people to say, hey, does this work? 
David Ogilvy actually did that, where he'd go into factories. He'd understand where the customer's coming from so that he could write a piece of copy that resonates with them. To tailor the copy, it's important to go to the source even Mm -hmm. and find out if it works. So little time is taken right now these days, you know, as a creator, they're given the the time to really understand the product Mm -hmm. and really understand the customer and do groundwork like a journalist or anthropologist. And that's when you come with the best ideas because then you're not just doing it on the fly. You're doing it because you're really crafting that copy and you're really seeing it from all points of view. And that's how you tailor copy. You're a journalist, you're an anthropologist, you understand what's required from the business side and you dig and then you write brilliant copy. (laughs) And not once, you rewrite and rewrite tons of times. So with that context in mind, Lindsay, what would you say are the building blocks of an effective communications plan or communication piece? Okay, so there are two pieces. So if it's internal, which is the employee side, you start off with focus groups. You need to have that. Your research is beyond important. I do believe in research. So if I'm going into a new company, I need to do focus groups. I need to do a plan to understand what is the culture like. Any communications depends on your culture and communications is quite aligned. So I'd go, you know, I'd do my SWOT analysis and everything else, speaking to people, understanding where are they at, and then find platforms to um, build a better way of communicating with employees. There are two sides to it. Creative marketing is a completely different ballgame in certain ways. And then you have the employee side, which is also different because I've done both. So when I write an ad, I do the competitor analysis, the positioning of the brand. When it comes to employee comms, I also do research and I see what it's like, what the landscape is like currently and what I can implement to make things better. The way employees feel, what the employees feel about the brand also impacts the customer at the end of the day. So it coincides very much so. So I'm so glad that you touched on that then, Lindsay, because the perception in many businesses is that communication is only outward focused, i.e. to consumers and to clients. But we've mm-hmm. seen that internal communications, i.e. with employees, it's become just as important. So how can businesses become better at communicating with their people and what are the benefits? Especially in today's world, where most people are working remotely. The employee needs to still feel connected to the company because if there's no connection, then there's no motivation, there's no passion, there's no nothing. It's just mm-hmm. like, okay, I'm just going to do a job and that's it. But when you have employees are motivated to get up every day and know that they're achieving something to help somebody or there's a great mission, that's what that needs to be put as a priority. For me personally, to improve employee communication is to understand where, once again, it might be an employee, but those are your customers essentially. To understand where they're coming from, what are, what are the pain points, and how can you remedy it? There's so many different online platforms that you can use to engage. I mean, I've seen many um, quizzes and things that people are trying out now. We're living in a time where things are changing drastically, and it's important to inform ourselves If people, employees are disgruntled, they're going to reflect that to the customers and that's not a great thing for the brand. I think that's where it should actually start. I think that's where communication should start. Um, Get everyone on the same page. And I don't believe in hierarchy. (laughs) I like it to be a flat surface of communication. People should be open and free to achieve their, their goals within the company. Engage with people all the time. Acknowledge them what they are achieving and the hard work that they are doing. Recognition programs are the way to go even more now, I think. And you've just mentioned engagement there, Lindsay, and we have access to so many communication channels today. And it can be quite confusing when it comes to choosing the best channel to use to communicate with our audience. So in your experience, what are some of the best channels that businesses can use to communicate with both their internal and their external audiences? I'm definitely a fan, a fan of LinkedIn because LinkedIn does actually blur the lines, right? So it's a great way to showcase your brand because if you're active on the platform, people keep, if they see your brand popping up all the time, you keep them top of mind, your brand's top of mind all the time. And employees themselves, they feel proud if they see their brand popping up all the time and being active on social media. So you hit two birds with one stone. I write to people who aren't in my industry or in different organizations 
and you close the gap as well on LinkedIn. And do you have any suggestions for channels that businesses can use for their internal communications with their people? Um, I'm a fan of Yammer right now. Actually, I'm actually exploring that. Oh, this wonderful way where you can see bird's eye view of the entire company. So as I'm coming in, I can see, oh, that's the training section. They have little hubs within Yammer. It's nice to be able to see the whole organization, you know, in a, in a way that you're not isolated, especially when you're a worker working from remotely. And as we head into the last section of our interview, Lindsay, do you have any last piece of advice that you would like to leave with our listeners, particularly our business owners? I think for me, out of everything, I do believe that all communication is understanding and trying to find to see things from another person's point of view. It's like talking to somebody but a stranger or somebody that you really care about. You wouldn't just haphazardly just say whatever you'd like. You'd think about it. You'd be empathetic. You'd be kind. You'd be all of those things. It matters in today's world even more. So be different. Don't just send messages to customers um, just because you want to sell something. Send it because you want to make a difference in their lives. And you'll be surprised how much magic you'll bring into your product. I promise you to something differently. Thanks for that piece of advice, Lindsay. I have no doubt that there would be listeners who would want to reach out to you afterwards. Perhaps they want to have a deeper discussion with you about business communication. What are the different channels where they can reach you, Lindsay? So I have uh, my personal email address um, is lindsay, L-I-N-D-S-A-Y dot Wagner, W-A-G-N-E-R at yahoo.com. And you mentioned earlier that people could potentially reach you on LinkedIn as well? Yes, absolutely. I'm always on LinkedIn. Thank you so much for being our guest today. It's been so great to have you here and to learn from you on the business communication side. It's so important for big and small businesses to know how to reach their audience in an authentic way. And you've shown us exactly how this can be done. We've seen how communication evolves over time, and I'm very excited to have you join us again in future to teach us more about the science of communication and how it's actually changed in our world. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. We hope that you enjoyed today's podcast episode. Be sure to come back regularly for more great content that focuses on personal, career, entrepreneur, and business growth. Find out more about our coaching services and get in touch with our team by following the link in our post or visit dingscoconsulting.co.za.